Welcome to Public Health On Call, a podcast from the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, where we bring evidence, experience, and perspective to make sense of today's leading health challenges. If you have questions or ideas for us, please send an email to publichealthquestion at jhu.edu. That's publichealthquestion at jhu.edu for future podcast episodes. This is Lindsay Smith-Rogers, producer of Public Health on Call. Today, an unlikely federal agency takes steps to address climate change. I'm talking about the Centers for Medicare and Medicare Services, the nation's trillion-dollar healthcare agency. Dr. Purva Rawal is the chief strategy officer in the CMS Innovation Center. She joins Dr. Josh Sharfstein to talk about a new proposal that aims to engage a large number of U.S. hospitals in the work of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Globally, healthcare is responsible for about twice the amount of these emissions as the aviation industry. Let's listen. Dr. Purva Rawal, thank you so much for joining me today on Public Health on Call to talk about efforts of the Innovation Center at the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, efforts on climate. But before we get there, could you tell me a little bit about your role at the Innovation Center? Yeah, I'd be happy to. And Josh, I'll just start by thanking you for um, having me here today. I've really admired your leadership in public health for many years, so it's an honor. I also finished my graduate training at the Bloomberg School of Public Health and at, Kennedy, at the Kennedy Krieger Institute across the street. So it's a, that makes it especially exciting to contribute to your podcast. I, At the CMS Innovation Center, I am the chief strategy officer, so I support our leadership team and our groups in implementing key parts of our strategic objectives, and I also lead our health equity work. Great. Well, that raises... Interesting question, which is, what are the strategic objectives of the Innovation Center? What What's the overall goal of this part of the federal government? When we talk about, uh, when we think about the CMS Innovation Center, think of us as the research and development or R&D component of CMS. If we go back to the beginning when the Innovation Center first started, it was created in the Affordable Care Act to test new ways to improve care for our beneficiaries in the Medicare and Medicaid programs and to look at ways to lower costs for the program. So really moving our healthcare system away from one that pays for fee for service to one that's paying for value. And if we unpack the word value, it's some combination of quality or outcomes and costs. So we test new ways of paying for healthcare. And we do this by testing what we call value-based care models. They're time-limited tests that give us the opportunity to say, you know, how can we um, test different ways of paying and caring, uh, delivering care so that we're improving um, quality and outcomes? The ways that uh, we're paying for healthcare, they can be based on what's good, hopefully, for a patient or a community. Is, is their health improving? Is a community's health improving? Are people able to meet their personal health goals as a result of the changes that we're testing and making? And then what are some of uh, our patients' non-medical needs? You know, we're really focused on health-related social needs and the social determinant, determinants of health that we know can impact health. In a way, for all of the money that taxpayers and the federal government are putting into healthcare. CMMI, the Innovation Center, is asking, how can we get the most health for that investment? I think that is a great way of putting it. And we do this in lots of different areas, right? We can test um, models in um, specific disease areas like cancer, dementia. We work with particular kinds of healthcare providers like primary care providers, behavioral health providers. You're really familiar with some of our state-based work. We have um, state-based models, transformation models in, in states like Maryland and gives us really an opportunity to have a wide reach across the country and in different parts of the health system to see what's working. So I'm I'm used to reading very interesting announcements from the Innovation Center at CMS on all these different payment models, but one uh, across my desk uh, popped up in my email that had to do with climate. And the first question I have for you is, why climate and healthcare? I think of CMS as Medicare and Medicaid, I think of climate sometimes more as EPA, for example, or HHS, thinking about some of the health impacts of climate. But why health care and climate? Now, you know, we know that climate change is driven by greenhouse gas emissions. Um, they present a serious threat to patient health and to many of your listeners that are public health <laughs> junkies and wonks. It's a serious threat. One of the maybe the biggest challenges we face in public health. We also know that's especially harmful for our most disadvantaged or underserved populations, right? Children, older adults, low-income communities, they are bearing the brunt 
uh, more of the brunt from pollution and the effects of climate change. In the, in the U.S., this means, you know, Medicare, which covers all of our seniors, and Medicaid, which covers many low-income Americans. They're also bearing the cost of, um, of caring for these impacts. And it's not just for care after extreme weather events, but increasing rates of chronic diseases like respiratory disease, cancer, stroke, heart disease. And climate change doesn't just hurt our underserved communities, it hurts them disproportionately, but it fundamentally hinders our ability as a health system to care for all of us. You know, we saw just uh, not that long ago how Hurricane Maria's impact on Puerto Rico disrupted access to critical medical supplies, things like saline. And I think we, you know, we've recently come across a study that estimated that one in 12 hospitals in the world could totally or partially shut down due to extreme weather. So the link between climate change and the impact on the health system and the resilience of the health system is very clear. And then when we actually break down the health system, you know, the health system uh, is not only experiencing the effects of climate change, but then you break down its potential contribution to climate change and then you start to see an opportunity emerge. Right. Yeah. And then we, you know, we, we know that the U.S. healthcare sector contributes about eight and a half percent of total U.S. greenhouse gas emissions. And so we think, you know, we believe that the health system plays an important role uh, in not only, you know, building resilience, but in mitigating the impacts of climate change more broadly. So it's sort of a double reason why the Innovation Center is getting involved. The health consequences of climate change have this big impact on Medicare and Medicaid uh, beneficiaries on their health. Um, but also because the healthcare system itself is contributing to the problem. Absolutely right. It's contributing to a problem that it then also has to take care of. So now enter the Innovation Center into this space. Tell me about the Decarbonization and Resiliency Initiative. Yeah, we are really excited. We just uh, rolled out our new uh, Decarbonization and um, Resilience Initiative. Um, you know, I'll talk a little, give you a little bit of background on it, and then kind of happy to dive in where you think uh, your listeners would be more interested. Uh, it's a voluntary uh, reporting system that we are um, that we've proposed. It's actually something that about 30% of hospitals are already doing by reporting their energy emissions data. And some are doing this uh, because their states or, or localities require greenhouse gas reporting, like in California or in the city of St. Louis. Uh, however, this is the first time ever that the Department of Health and Human Services, or HHS, has proposed um, collecting these data from providers. Uh, I think it represents a really strong step forward in the federal government playing a role in tackling the health sector's carbon footprint, which I talked about just a, a few seconds ago. The benefit for those hospitals that want to voluntarily report this data will be to help them identify opportunities to improve their energy efficiency help them identify ways to lower their own greenhouse gas emissions, and then to drive um, a transformation within their, their hospitals and organizations that over time leads to more sustainable operations. So you're offering hospitals the opportunity to share their data, but also get some technical support in making a difference. Yeah, that's right. The, that's sort of the sex. So the, the first major component of the initiative is reporting. And then you just noted that the second major uh, component is um, the development and rollout of technical assistance and learning system support for participants. So one of the things that we have in all of the value-based payment models that we test that I described early are learning systems that really give our participants the chance to learn from each other, uh, problem solve together. And so we'll be leveraging our learning systems here as well. And, and can, I, can I ask you just to maybe make that concrete? Let's take one aspect of how a health system contributes to climate change. And how do you imagine that hospitals could get together through a learning system to tackle that? Yeah, so I'll give you, you know, uh, one example. I'll go back to the reporting. There are four key data types that we're going to be using as part of the report, proposing to use as part of the reporting system. So one is organizational. How does an organization set goals for decarbonization? And then how do they actually implement a decarbonizational a decarbonization plan? So are they set up as an organization to do this? So that's just one example where you might work, you might talk to other hospitals that are also part of this initiative and find out what are the organizational structures that they've set up? You know, who are the champions within an organization that they've identified to help? How are they setting realistic goals and executing on them? Another example is uh, scope one transportation emissions. These are very direct emissions. So, you know, there's going to be reporting, tracking of, let's say you're a hospital and you have vehicles. 
are those energy efficient vehicles. And so that's another place where you might have a learning system where people, again, are sharing some of their own practices, identifying what's working and what's not. And then we're able to diffuse or disseminate, hopefully, some of those um, best practices. And I also understand that anesthetic gases contribute to climate change. Is that right? That's right. And is, is that another area you could imagine that hospitals could could talk to each other about how to reduce the climate impact of their use of anesthesia? Yeah, absolutely. That is one of the um, one of the other four areas where we're looking for data reporting on. We think this is a, a really this is an area where uh, we can make some real progress in terms of hospitals reporting anesthetic gas metrics. This is a bit of a bridge for the innovation center to cross to get into something that maybe doesn't immediately deal with patient care. You know, it, it obviously, as you pointed out, does pertain to health. Um, do you think that hospitals are going to be jumping at the opportunity to do this? What, what, what is your hope for participation? I mean, I think we have a good foundation to start on. 30% of hospitals are already reporting on many of these metrics. We're offering technical assistance and thinking about what that technical assistance should look like and actually asking for comments and feedback on what hospitals would need to be able to, to, to participate in reporting. So, for instance, there were um, a number of resources that uh, were included in the Inflation Reduction Act for the IRAs, many of you may have heard of, um, to undertake decarbonization activities. So we're going to be linking and, and using that as part of our TA. How do you use the resources that are already out there? Again, compiling and disseminating best practices from those that have already successfully lowered their emissions. And I think we have some really great success stories. A lot of folks that we, we talk to as we design this initiative to find out what they're already doing. So we have some great case studies and success stories out there to point to to show that this is possible and that there is an impact um, in terms of hospitals and, and their ability to reduce their costs. So I think we have a great foundation to build on. We're hoping people are excited. Our, you know, the early feedback we've gotten you know, is excitement, but we're there to help people along the way. Let me ask you this. Does the Innovation Center envision that the public will be able to find out which hospitals are participating in the decarbonization initiative? Yeah, we are actually uh, proposing to establish, to create a kind of a publicly reported hospital recognition badge. So if you are reporting, doing this voluntary reporting, we could provide, you know, we're proposing to provide annual kind of recognition to those folks, to those hospitals that are stepping up and participating in this voluntary initiative. And um, that we could, you know, add this kind of recognition, this public recognition to a public website that people could go to and see if the hospitals are, are participating in this uh, decarbonization effort. That's great. So in theory, people could find out whether their hospital is participating. And if they're not participating, they could say, hey, do you know about this program? We would love that. <laughs> but uh, we're all open for comments. We are gathering public feedback. So I know this is just a proposal. What is the process from here? Yeah, so we have a public comment gathering process. And so we have the, the proposed, this proposal out for public comment. We gather all those comments, we read them, we really do, look through them, and then release a public final kind of proposal or rule, as we call it. So, you know, be looking for that later this summer, or early fall, and then hopefully some of these pieces will be final. But that public input and comment is really important when we're proposing something new, and uh, we're excited to hear what the public has to say. Well, uh, Dr. Rawal, thank you so much for coming to Public Health On Call and explaining this very interesting and important initiative from the Innovation Center at CMS. Thanks for the opportunity. Public Health On Call is a podcast from the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, produced by Joshua Sharfstein, Lindsay Smith-Rogers, Stephanie Desmond, and Grace fernandez Ciciri. Audio production by J.B. Arbogast, Holly Cardinal, Spencer Greer, Matthew Martin, and Philip Porter, with support from Chip Hickey. Distribution by Nick Moran. Production management by Catherine Ricardo. Social media run by Grace fernandez Ciciri. Analytics by Eliza Rosen. If you have questions or ideas for us, please send us an email to publichealthquestion at jhu.edu. That's publichealthquestion at jhu.edu for future podcast episodes. Thank you for listening.